Who loves that? You tell me because I don't know. <laughs> call the meeting to order. Oh. I'd like to call the um, Commission on Aging and Disabled uh, meeting to order. Stamp pledge. Uh, pledge, pledge. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public participation. I guess that's you, Dave. Uh, yeah, a few things about the council that directly and indirectly affect the senior center. And some of you may have heard this about three or four times within the last couple of days. Um, the referendum uh, that was held and revised the town charter is passed. So we're under new and improved, we hope, regulations. And uh, in terms of the Senior Disabled Center, it means that now if need be, if you wish to change the number of people that are on your board, it can be done through an ordinance as opposed to going through a charter and opening everything. I think that's the major thing. Uh, also, um, at our council meeting the other uh, the other day, uh, we, um, as you know, the uh, town manager is retiring on or resigning on the 3rd of December and we appointed an acting town manager as of December 3rd, uh, which is uh, Jamie Trevitan. Not change. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. I know, I know I do that. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, you're great. <laughs> well, James right here is going to, uh, uh, has agreed to, to step yeah, in yeah. for a 90 day period uh, as the acting town manager while the council goes out for a search. Uh, search committee, which I am not on, has has met, and they will get a. Uh, they have, if they haven't already, get a, a a consultant to go through the process, which has gone through before for a nationwide or region wide search. Um, so uh, that process will be starting. If it is not completed within 90 days, the council has the option to reappoint uh, James for an additional 90 days, uh, if need be. Um, uh, those that feel they are appropriate, whether it's in-house or out-of-house, may apply for the position. Uh, and uh, there are rumors flying around of even at that moment as to James being the permanent town manager or not. Uh, one never knows what his plans are in the future, but indeed it's clear at this point uh, he's acting town manager and he, he knew in advance uh, full well what the situation uh, was going to be and, and uh, what the process is. Uh, did I get that correct? You did. I did, except for your, except for the name. I scared Jamie for a second. Yeah. There. <laughs> I've done that before with other people. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the way you did that. <laughs> <laughs> is there, if there's anything else, uh, I think that basically is what affects directly and indirectly the Senior Disabled Center. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jamie's staff report. Sure. Um, we just met 20 days ago, so I don't have a, too, too much to report, but since we're busy every day, I do ha definitely have a couple of things to go over. Um, first and foremost, at the last meeting, Commissioner Franz had a great idea about um, doing a program or a monthly meeting or work group for silent illnesses or disabilities. And our program coordinator, Barbara Romer, is working on that. She's looking for some qualified um, speakers or instructors or people who could facilitate that. And then she's going to be working on scheduling that out or thinking of doing that as like a series of meetings or of programs or of classes and then trying to figure out how we might work it into a regular program that's done at the center. Um, last Friday, we had some of you in the room here. We hosted the Veterans Day ceremony for the town. Um, Pre-pandemic, it would have been held in the old town hall, um, in the old lobby of the town hall. We took that over, I want to say, in 2019. And then there was no in-person um, ceremony for the, you know during the pandemic. We brought it back this year. Um, it was coordinated by the American Legion and some volunteers um, with help from the Newington Police Department, the Singing Seniors of Newington, Greater Federation of Women, Women's Club of Weathersfield in Newington. Um, it was done very, very well. Um, we had about 90 folks attend the ceremony, give or take. 
including a couple people in this room. Afterwards, we hosted a luncheon for veterans who were um, senior center members as well, as well as other select veterans who were invited by um, the folks at the um, American Legion or some other folks who we, you know, who were around who we invited. And we had about 65 people for lunch. Um, staff served the lunch and the Hartford, the Women's Club provided some really delicious cake and helped us serve. Uh, so all in all, it was a very successful day. We look forward to doing it next year. We met with the people who um, organized the ceremony, the two gentlemen. We met with them again today to see how we can move back into providing services and programs for veterans back in the center again. Um, so that's moving forward nicely. We had the third installment of the WISE program. That was the final installment on the 10th of November. That's where CCSU students and senior center members meet to discuss topics of mutual interest. This time it was held at the center, um, very well received. Um, it's, a, it's a great generational program. We do that one on a semester basis. So the next one will be in the spring when that class meets again at CCSU. It's typically some sort of psychology class, sometimes it, um, uh, you know, for older adults, sometimes it's just a general psychology class. Um, we have we had lots of great classes just in the past 20 days. We had a Halloween program with some folks in Connecticut who were like um, kind of ghost hunters, for lack of a better term. They talked about supernatural. It was kind of a neat Halloween program, various craft classes. Um, we had a lunch and learn regarding diabetes and heart disease. Every single one of these programs was at capacity. Um, we, our bus trips, after we talked about it for months, it seems finally resumed. We had one to the Rhode Island um, Newport today, the Playhouse, and lunch and a show. Um, and then we went back to the casino um, earlier in the month. There was a trip to Foxwoods. Didn't quite sell out. Um, the problem is the casinos are no longer offering comps to any. None of the casinos are offering comps to any of the senior centers in the state. And that was a big selling point. Like you'd pay $25 for the bus, but you'd get like a $25 meal ticket or $25 in free casino play. That program has ended everywhere. So it's a little bit of a harder sell now. We sell it as you get a nice ride. You don't have to worry about driving. You don't have to worry about traffic. Um, <clears throat> we will need to sell out future buses in order to not lose money. So this was a one-time thing to hopefully get everybody excited about it. And we'll see how future trips sell. Um, let's see. Oh, we had a hip hop exercise dance party today, which was always so much fun. It's um, you could be seated or you could stand and you have an instructor who's great and they just dance all sorts of upbeat music. Um, let's see what else did we do? Lots of stuff. Was it hip hop music? Mm -hmm. It was. It was hip hop music from going back to like, you know, a couple decades, like back to the 80s. Very upbeat. Always. They have like happy faces and props and big sunglasses. It's just fun. Um, I hope Barbara got some pictures that we could share on Facebook of that. So what else in my staff report? Um, let me just look at the agenda here for a second. Some of this will be for after, right? Um, a couple of other miscellaneous things. Oh, um, Meals on Wheels is still going very strong. We have noticed quite a significant increase in need since we've reopened um, from the pandemic. We have at least 60 people receiving meals every day. Um, some people receive two meals a day, some receive one. It all translates to over... 1,200 meals per month being delivered by volunteers. Uh, we get our lunch crowd is at about 35 people for a regular lunch crowd, still smaller than pre-pandemic, but manageable with what our resources are now. On special days like tomorrow, where they have a turkey dinner, we're getting 45 to 50 people coming to lunch. Um, meals, I said that. Um, the gift shop is still going strong. I don't have updated numbers. I'm waiting for them from finance with our deposits, but I can tell you just instant, you know, as a donor, it's busy in there. People are enjoying it. They've already turned over into all the fall and Thanksgiving decor, and they're moving into to holiday stuff. So that's just a nice thing to have back. All in all, it's busy there. It's pleasant. It's happy. People are, are enjoying their time at the senior center. Um, it's nice to see like a bustle and movement and various programs going on at once. Dial a ride has been fully open for some time. Um, they're just as busy as ever. They did 1,740 miles um, last month, which is 498 trips. Um, we also have been transitioned into the new out of town supplier. Um, we had curtain transportation. Now we have ambassador transportation. We piggyback with funding off of West Hart, I'm sorry, Weathersfield and Rocky Hill. That's going very well. Um, very few growing pains there. So we're happy with that. They provide out of town medical transportation. Um, 
to eight towns in the area. Uh, so that's something that's used heavily. We handle the reservations for that. Let's see, occasionally dial a ride drivers help with Meals on Wheels delivery. If we find ourselves short on volunteers, they deliver 25 meals this month. And we are still in search of a part-time dial a ride driver. We can handle our workload with the two full-time drivers that we have now. With a part-time driver, we could expand our services. We could also expand into things like day trips that aren't the big chartered bus trips, but things that we have done in the past that have been very popular and uh, you know, people are willing to pay some money to be taken to um, out to lunch or to West Farms Mall. Of course, we can't do that with our drivers constantly on the road all day. Um, the town manager's office has posted the job a number of times and they're just not getting any any applications. So we have to keep working on that. Um, let's see, I'll talk about upcoming programs in a few minutes. The snack bar? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that is also going well. Um, it did about $500 in sales in the past three weeks since we last met which again, not at pre-pandemic numbers, but what we're going to do is we are going to expand our offerings to some of the pre-pandemic items that we hadn't because of cost concerns before. Um, just for an example, the cost of bacon was outrageous back in April when the, gift shop, when the coffee shop reopened. It's not so bad now. So we're gonna, Monday, we're actually bringing back bacon, ham, things that don't sound super impressive, but they're really popular sellers. So um, we're hoping that that's going to um, boost our sales a bit. I think we're pretty solid in volunteers. Um, we are looking for somebody to open on Mondays, which will help us again boost our sales to where we were before um, because we're only operating three days rather than four. And um, Josie, the, our administrative coordinator, I believe just this afternoon, she finally got our agreement with Shopkeep, which is the POS system on the iPad, worked out so that it's not outrageously priced because we can't afford to pay hundreds of dollars a month for it. So you should see that coming I would say in the next day or two. Yeah, I know it's so much easier to do that. Um, so that's all good news there. Um, everybody seems happy and any issues, you know, Barbara's doing a wonderful job handling all of our nutrition programs and needs. On, um, let's see, I told you I had a lot to say, even though we just met. On, um, where was I? Who was it? Oh, sorry. Oh my I gosh, it's okay. You. I was just going backwards in my notes. On November 3rd, I attended the first in-person conference for CASP, which is the Connecticut Association of Senior Center Professionals, for which I am also the vice president. And uh, one of the speakers, it was a nice conference, just a lot of updates about senior center operations in general and, and you know how everybody's doing post-COVID or what we call post-COVID. But there was a speaker, uh, Claire Cody. She is um, a field representative for the state unit on aging for senior centers. And she discussed that there is potential, very, very good potential for about $2 million of funding coming from the state, actually coming from ARPA funds um, that would be specified sp specifically for senior centers in the state. Um, there's obviously a lot more info to follow. I don't have a ton to tell you right now. Um, the state UN on aging has been charged with distributing that funding. So I'm assuming we're going to have some sort of application process. I know we will get something from it, but how much? I have no idea what they're going to use for their criteria of which centers get what amount of money. I will tell you that assuming we get a significant amount of money from that funding, um, depending on the parameters of the fund, of the grant funding, you know, there may be certain things we can or can't use it for. The two things that come to mind immediately for me would be mental health resources and staffing, um, which I reluctantly say, but what we have found since reopening back in January and then continually doing so through now we're like 11 months in, um, is that people need more mental health resources. They need more help. Um, folks need more help in general. Our seeing our staff is a, a simple phone call before to take a ride for an out of town um, medical appointment that would have taken two minutes before is suddenly taking a half an hour because they're calling back, they have questions, you know, they're, they're they, oh, they know they need to change it. Oh, no, can you call my doctor and confirm because I don't remember where the doctor is. People seem to have more needs than they used to. And it's not just here in Newington. It's it's everywhere, all the senior center people I've talked to. Um, so we're just kind of starting now to get our arms around that and to see what that means for us and how we provide services to people and how we communicate to people. We have a smaller staff than we did pre-pandemic. And I'm not looking to add four full-time staff members or anything of the sort, but one of the potential solutions that we were coming up with was to perhaps reinstate 
a vacated position of just a part-time person to help answer phones. Because our secretary, I'm not kidding, she's on the phone from 8.30 to 4.30 helping people. So it's very difficult to keep up with the constant, constant, constant volume of calls. Again, this is all very early information. I'm hoping to have more info at our next meeting. I'm just kind of throwing that out there so you know. Um, last week, I also attended a meeting with the Connecticut Healthy Living Collective. I'm on their advisory board. And what we are, we are, there was um, an initiative called the LGBT Movable Senior Center, which my predecessor, Diane Stone, was instrumental in founding along with a bunch of other senior centers. Um, which kind of does what it sounds. They're a program for LGBTQ um, people um, in various senior centers, and they're open to anybody. They're, you know, they're, they are meant to be inclusive and welcoming um, to, to those folks, and they are to be topics of interest, although they don't necessarily have to be social justice topics. They're topics of interest to LGBTQ seniors who are a very vulnerable group. Um, they're looking to refresh that program. It never stopped during the pandemic. Um, it went remote like everything else. And we held our first in-person one over the summer, which was very successful. But what we're doing is we're looking to collaborate with the Healthy Living Collective to make it kind of a branded program for centers across the state who wish to participate. So centers who wish to participate would have to do some training. Um, and there would probably be like a memorandum of understanding or some sort of agreement um, on programs and standards that they would provide and offer. Um, it would also provide a toolkit for program ideas and resources and this is all kind of in the planning stages. So I joined that committee to help plan that because again, the New Newington Senior Center was one of the first centers to start this anyway. So now we're going to be offering it. Right now, a handful of centers do it. We're gonna be offering to anybody across the state who wants to take part. Um, it would mean, again, meeting certain criteria, certain training, agreeing to do a certain amount of programming each year and the programming needs to meet certain parameters as well. But I think it's very valuable. And I think, Everything else can come up later in the agenda. Any questions? I flew through that so fast. Oh, sounds like you're busy. We're always busy. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Is that in the past you had bus trip that would go on the city bus when people were trying it out and went to a restaurant? Mm -hmm. Is that anything that you want to consider? Yep, we are working on that. Um, what we were working on doing was using the dial a ride buses because of the accessibility. Um, but we need a driver for that. We can't, we can Aren't sometimes. There public buses? There they itself? are, they are. I, I guess we can look into public buses. We haven't well, necessarily the ones that go right in front of the senior yep. center. And it's something to look into. Again, we were looking more into providing it as like a senior center trip with our drivers, our buses, our staff. Um, but that's certainly an option. We'd want to look at anything that can get people out and about and doing what they want to do. Sorry, I'm just writing it. <laughs> You're writing furiously. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Anything else? Any other comments? No? Uh, Jamie, just curious about uh, your LGBTQ initi or the initiative um, that was started, I guess. Was it started by Diane Stowe? She was one of the founding people who started it, along with some other senior centers throughout the state. Sure. Um, is there any information I could look at? Uh, just for personal research, um, just to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah, if you go to, and I can email this to you later if you like, but if you go to the Connecticut Healthy Living Collective website, there should be a page on there. I know there's a page on there for the Movable Senior Center. Again, it's not, I wouldn't say it's dormant at all because we, we're active with it, but it's due for a refresh and renewal. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. But in terms of what's currently there, feel free to take a look on that website. Thank you. You're welcome. So I believe that they have meetings at different. There, um, it goes through mm -hmm. centers. Take turns hosting, correct? Yeah. And they are substantive programs. It's not just like, oh, come have coffee. You know, there's typically speakers or some sort of programmer or, or lecture or class, and then there's always like a social component to it. It could be lunch. We did karaoke at ours after um, after the instructional part and there's typically um, a part in which resources are shared or made available. It could be like a tour of that particular senior center or it could be just sharing resources that are related to the group. Um, it could be a number of things. So we're working on, like I said, we just met last week. We agreed on a whole bunch of things. Now we gotta start building our framework. So what do you do about it? They have to be members? <coughs> no, they... because it's a movable senior center, it could be, it's open to any, any, any for us, it'd be anybody 55 plus or any adult 18 plus with a disability. It's like veterans, right? They don't have to be Correct. members. Yep. 
I mean, we, ideally, we'd like them to become members, but certainly we welcome anybody whether they're a member or not. Right. Okay. Um, under, let's see, old business, do we have a budget update? Um, we are um, being very resourceful with our budgeting, trying to be as fiscally responsible as possible, understanding the financial climate that we're in. In terms of the budget itself, did I put that? Um, the CIP requests are due early next month. I am working on a potential CIP request. There's some question as to whether it's ours or it belongs to the town. I think I mentioned this about um, renovating our stage into a usable program space. I can't bring that report, I'm sorry. Yeah, you um, did, you mentioned it. Yeah, last yeah. so well, that's one thing that we're considering doing. Again, I've already been in discussion with facilities and with Joe Salomon, the assistant town manager, and Keith, about who got, you know, whose responsibility that would be um, in terms of payment. Now, anybody who's, I think, you know, may be familiar with the CIP, most people here, but it, it's it's approved every year, but it's planned out for five years. So that they could say, oh, we'll put that on the third year in, but then when we get to the third year in, it has to be approved. So it's just something I'm just going to throw out there now. We'll see about how we can get some funding for that or where the funding will even come from. But again, that's a wasted space right now. We can't use it for, for performances. It's kind of just we throw storage up there and we don't really need to. So I would love to make it into a usable program space. Um, other things, you know, talking about space needs, um, we're trying to, we're thinking about making the old Central Connecticut Health District office into a volunteer workspace. And we're thinking about how we use our wood shop, which is underutilized and making it more into a maker space. But those aren't really budgetary items, they're just ideas right now. So that's it, the budget, the CIP requests are due in January. The budget memo should come out relatively soon. So I would have a, a, a proposed budget to send to the town manager or the acting town manager. And um, that would go out with the changes. We would meet, you know, how the process works. And then the town manager sends um, his or her, her budget to the town council for their approval, as you all know. Okay. That makerspace sounds interesting. I'm looking at what other centers do and some, like some nursing homes do it, a lot of schools do it. We can keep the wood shop um items and materials and so the folks who do woodworking could stay but the whole rest of that room is kind of a messy wasted space so if we can make it into where you have stations where people could try different things or bring in their own project to work on and have a space to do it you know that's something that would be interesting we could definitely get some funding for that or some donations for that just just thoughts the central connecticut health district space is that part of the new the old building or the old, no, the old building is fine. Okay. No, there, we used to, if, I don't know when it was because before I was there, there used to be a very small and it wasn't, satellite it office. It wasn't it's, handicapped accessible. No, it's not. So we have to address that. Oh, okay. It's tiny. So it's okay. like, I don't know, it's, it's like twice of that table. It's, it's very small. Yeah. So it's, it's, like, it's essentially a like closet. Bathroom yeah. Or a closet. So <laughs> if we could, but, you know, if I say our, our smaller volunteer groups, like our trip committee or like our, our um, coffee shop people or something, they wanted to go in there and have a meeting or they wanted to keep items. And it's just, I'm thinking more about like our self-directed group of volunteers where they, where they want to get together and talk about their planning. I, I think it's a better, again, we're using it right now for storage. We have all these little storage areas all over the building, which are really well organized now because of COVID and our bus drivers organizing everything. But um, we don't need as much storage space as we have, so we can consolidate things. And I like to find better use for a lot of our space. Okay. Um, new business, uh, membership renewal. Yep. Um, talked about this the last meeting. We're at about 1,400 members. We have shifted our focus from bringing in renewals to attracting new members. And I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, so forgive me. Um, we're looking at younger, older adults, meaning people who are approaching 55, who are likely still working or probably still working. And what are their needs and what are their interests? Um, we're looking at people who are, are underserved right now, who we may be missing, who are vulnerable or isolated. And then the third group that we're looking at is just general, the folks who live in the senior housing in Newington. Because even though there, it's literally 10 feet from us outside one of our doors. We've never done a lot with them. I mean, you know, all of our programs are open to them. A lot of them take Meals on Wheels or Dial-A-Ride, but it's surprising how few people who live there, who live at the high rise in the center, who live at Kelleher, 
um, how few of those people actually come to the center. So we're doing some targeted info out to those folks. Like we, we bring our newsletters over there every month and everything else. We're really going to kind of go over there, talk to the residents, give them our information, tell them what we do, what we can offer. So those are kind of our three groups. We're starting with the senior housing groups because that just is the most straightforward in terms of getting the word out. And we're working on gathering info, how what we're going to do with the others. Have you considered like going there and having some program? Yep, yep. We did some of that. <clears throat> excuse me, on a small scale, with Diane, before she left before the pandemic, and we'll bring that back when I'm thinking about expanding it. And you do post what's going on. Yeah, we yeah. And like I said, we. So the dial ride drivers, when the, when the newsletters come out every month, one of the dial ride drivers' jobs while they're around, out and about around town doing their routes is they drop off stacks at Town Hall, the library, um, all of the senior living complexes, but they put them like in the community room or in their lobby or whatever. And then the next month they go back and there might only be like a handful of them gone. So we want them to get like two people, like here, look at this, you know, um, so you can see and not just the newsletter, but general, like, hey, do you need this? We have this, do you need this? We have this, you know, just to kind of get our info out there. As Diane always said, and I agree, we can't get too big. We can't accommodate all 11,000 older adults in Newington, but we can certainly make sure that people know that we exist. So that's, that's the goal. Uh, upcoming activities, I think you spoke about um, most of those. Well, we have a couple things coming up. Um, we have a strength and balance presentation on November 22nd, and then we get directly into holiday things. So holiday things are always a lot of fun at the center. Um, we have like a holiday trivia contest, holiday concert, tons of holiday crafts, music. Um, but we also acknowledge that that the holiday season is not happy for everybody for various reasons. So we also have classes on seasonal depression, um, grief during the holidays. So we, you know, we, it's a very joyful time in the center, but we acknowledge that it's not joyful for everybody. So that's basically what we have upcoming. Um, and then, like I said, the gift shop and the bus trips, they're going to start planning out the bus trips for 2023. And uh, the new newsletter should be out in a couple of days. Building update? Um, we, the windows, there's been no movement on that. Um, facilities department and the town engineer are doing a good job keeping me updated. There's just nothing, nothing to update right now. Um, we just had fire, our fire alarms tested today, which would have been nice if they <laughs> gave us some warning. Um, and because it was right when people were coming in for lunch and if the fire alarms go off, the fire doors close and all the gates come down. So the gate in the main office comes down, but then the gate in the cafeteria comes down too. So people are like, oh, are we trapped? I'm like, no, there's exits like here and here. These are things we need to talk about. But, um, and then there was an issue with, um, we had a drain in the roof that was leaking like into the entrance to the kitchen and facilities came by a couple of times like, oh, we thought it was just blocked with leaves or whatever, but it turned out to be like a structural issue. Um, so that's been resolved. So we no longer have a leak. That's about it. I kind of talked about my space needs thoughts, um, more of a like, a, you know, over the next couple months thinking about that. And the garden is finally shut down for the season. It was so warm for so long that we were getting tomatoes until last week. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so um, all in all, I think they donated over 600 pounds of fresh produce, organic produce to the New England Human Services Food Bank. All volunteers, two main volunteers and two other helpers. Well, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, consideration of upcoming purchases. Um, I don't have a specific purchase for you to consider tonight. Again, we're trying to be as fiscally responsible and budgetary as possible. We don't have any major needs, but one thing that we are starting to discuss, just to give you a heads up for a future meeting, is potentially a need for a small commercial dishwasher for the kitchen. A for washing out, we have like, the, I don't know what they're called, the pans for that, that go in the steam trays for lunch, the flat trays, which our food is delivered on. We have some items from the coffee shop, uh, mostly utensils and like the crock pot and things like that. And then when we have events or programs, we have like the water pitchers, the coffee crafts, we wash all that by hand. And I'm thinking it might be more sanitary to actually have a dishwasher. And also that way our Terry, our social worker doesn't have to, she just sits there and washes the dishes, which is nice of her. But um, so we just started looking at it. I said, I'm not asking for any kind of approval tonight. The price of approximately about $2,400 for um, a smaller size commercial dishwasher. 
that would meet our needs. It would handle the larger trays, but it's not like a big restaurant size one. So we don't need that. Um, the things we'd have to consider would be facilities if we were able to get like it hooked up to our water and hooked up into our kitchen. Um, we haven't asked them about it yet. I just wanted to bring it to your attention as something that I might ask for action on at the next meeting if we find out that we can indeed do so. I think right now with everything, it's a good idea to. I know a woman knows they have a restaurant supply place in Newington. Okay. And maybe she could get, a, if you give me the information, I'll see if she, what kind of price they possibly Here, you get. know, I'll give you this because I have a copy at my desk. Okay. Right down here. This is this is kind of what, as a sample, this isn't necessarily the specific one we're looking at, but okay. as a sample of what we need, that's kind of meets the parameters, but I'm going to write this down. Do you know the size of the trays that you want to put in there? I don't have that info right in front of me. Um, I have to measure them. Josie, who was doing the research, she measured them before she looked at the parameters. But they're like, they hold like six plates of food. So six dinner plates of food. So if you think about that size. It would just be a shame if we got something and it didn't fit. Oh, yeah. No, it can't be too small. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. okay. Just if you find out what sure. size it is, let me know. Okay. And that's all we have for purchases. Okay, uh, determine next meeting date and agenda. So, get my calendar. So the next meeting would be, December 7th. Is everybody available? It's Wednesday, December 7th at six. Are you okay with that? Hmm? What day? December 7th. It's our regular meeting, first Wednesday of the month. It appears so at the moment. Yep. yep. And I think we have another member who is appointed. I don't know if someone contacted her. Supposedly the information was passed on. And so I have no idea why that individual isn't here tonight or not. Uh, it isn't here. So uh, yeah, my big question mark to me, but we need to make certain, uh, I would think that uh, she's made aware of uh, the December 7th meeting, which is the regular time that we have them. But then again, she's never been to meetings before. I understand she was notified of her appointment. So maybe we'll just remind her that she needs to come in to, um, to be sworn in. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the reason why she isn't here tonight. I'm happy that we had a quorum tonight. Thank you all for coming. I was just wondering um, if you have her information yet. I know she isn't sworn in. so I do. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. So she, did she get the reminder about tonight? No, because that's set up through our current uh, list. So no, I'll, I'll send, I'll make sure that she knows. Okay. Would the meeting be here or at the senior center? I if I would prefer it's up to the commission, of course, but I would prefer it to be here just because this wonderful setup is much easier on with okay. the um, hybrid okay. setup. Again, eventually, I would love to get that set up over at this at the senior center. My understanding is it's a long lead time to do so. The library, I think, the library is also working on it. They actually instituted a new owl system, okay. so it's a double system oh, that will track and yeah. everything. So they had their second trial run on that, and okay. it's working quite well. Good. Are we next on the list? Possible. IT Pretty please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so under new business, I wanted to talk about the charter revision that you referenced that um, we, I thought maybe if we could talk about the number of members and maybe make a suggestion to the town council, would that would that work? I think, I don't know the process, but I know James had said it's the town clerk uh, that there are some things that need to be done before we can do that. That doesn't preclude that. them from starting the discussion. Mm. Um, it'll still come to council later yeah. on. But yes. I would, it would have to, to have an ordinance done. I just was wondering if she, or it's uh, premature to. No, we'd have, the, the charter would be in effect before we pass the ordinance. Okay. So that'd be fine. I don't know when it goes into effect or. Yeah, we'll be putting the advertising into next Thursday's paper. So 30 days after that advertising, all of the information is supplied to the Secretary of State's office for filing, as well as the results of it. 
So then it's in, in effect at that point. So with the proper procedure to be asked to be put on a town council agenda to to discuss the potential ordinance change? I know I know the ordinance change procedure, but how do, how would we? Um, I would say have the conversation yourselves first, mm -hmm. determine what your best layout is. You know, we're discussing the same thing with Parks and Rec at this moment as well. Um, 11 members is working for them again, but again, in three months, people may not start showing up again. It's getting warm. Everybody goes out and does what they want to do instead of going to the meeting. So start to think about that. Maybe you want to look at it as um, reducing it down in membership, keeping two alternates. If you want to stay the way you are, that's not a problem. We don't have to make any specific changes at this time. We can utilize that same membership type. Well, I know personally, I don't, we're having so much trouble getting members that I would like to decrease <clears throat> the number of members and maybe have two alternates. Is the commission, or, um, are your commissioners under, know what we're, what we're discussing here? The charter, the change in the charter, one of the changes in the charter allows for the charter right now states that the Commission on Aging and Disabled shall have nine members, which means for a quorum, we need five, which of course, as we all know, we've had significant trouble maintaining until recently. Um, a suggestion that was made during the charter revision process was to decrease the number of members on the commission from nine to seven, because seven is still a good sized commission, which we make our quorum four, which make it easier to do business should we be short on members. What the Charter Revision Commission, subsequently the town council and the town approved, was not to change it directly in the charter, but to make it into an ordinance process instead. So in order to change the number of um, members on any commission, you would have to pass an ordinance, which is like a three meeting process of the town council, um, as opposed to reopening the whole charter. So the discussion would be among this group, should we bring it to the town council to see about reducing our numbers or the number of people from nine to seven on the commission, perhaps making two alternates, but that would avoid, it would still be enough people to get the work done, but it would avoid issues of canceling meetings when we go periods of time without um, five people available. It's just so hard to get people to volunteer mm -hmm. now that we went, what, a year mm -hmm. without having a meeting because we didn't have a quorum. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I get that. I see it everywhere. All these um, clubs right. and yes, it's us old folks who seem to like to volunteer, and the young folks are busy with families and careers, and you know, and they're not volunteering right now. So, personally, I would like to see the number decrease to seven, um, but I don't know that probably four of the majority party and three of the minority party. That would be covered by the minority representation rule. So yeah, there would be, yeah. depending on the membership. But I don't know how other people feel about it. So I thought maybe we could talk about it. I mean, I, I personally think it's reasonable. I mean, it's like you said, and we've been going without meetings and you can't get things accomplished. You're just kind of spinning your wheels. So I don't think going to seven is is that would would benefit, um, you know. And then that way we'd always just have make sure that you had four people for a quorum. That'd be great. Mark, how do you feel about that? I tend to, I mean, as the newest, I think to the one of the newer member of the uh, committee, um, I would think that less, you know, going down to seven would seem that probably better. You know, in terms of logistics, in terms of actually getting, uh, you know, meeting and uh, not worrying about people being absent. Uh, so. Seems like a logical thing to do. Be with the last year where we have not been able to meet. Maybe this will, will help. Oh. And I know Jamie needs to get some things done and needs approval for. Um, purchases and things like that. It would be you... most helpful for general direction for the center, but also for things like membership renewals and that type of thing that come up, you know, a couple of times a year. I think it'd be very helpful. How many members, uh, volunteers are there now? At the senior center? Yeah. Um, we have about 70 to 75, some volunteer. Is that less than last year? Or... Well, it's hard to <clears> tell <throat> because over the, over the um, when everything was closed for COVID, the majority of our volunteers could not work. Some of them never came back when we reopened. And then we got some new ones who never had volunteered before. I would say in general, it's slightly less than we had prior, but it works for us. And some of them are there every day. 
Um, some of them volunteer weekly, um, like like Commissioner Sobieski in the in the coffee shop. And then some of them you just see like seasonally, like maybe our tax prep volunteers or somebody who works one or two days a year. So that's all different types. But I would say 70 to 75 is a good number. Yeah, because I was saying that this is not the only organization. Every year I'm on yes. different committees and all, and they all have volunteer issues. Yes. I so that. if we... I was thinking, what if we had a Newington volunteer opportunities on Facebook? Because some people don't know that there's what they could do or if they wanted to. And it's not a lot of work to do that. Keep it with me. Well, my, I, my daughter is in Cambridge and she's on the PTA and they can't get people to come out to meetings. Oh, okay. So... No, so, <laughs> and she's you know in her forties and she's younger. So we have I'm on two volunteer boards and they both have major opening, big openings. So if anybody wants to be the registrar for the soccer club of Newington, please let me know because I can't do it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you cannot volunteer for one more. No, thing. I'm the president. Of oh, you're the pre Newington. okay. You can't registrar. do both. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a busy woman; she yeah. always has time. So um, yes, it's a it's a common thing everywhere that. That volunteerism is difficult to find. I will say the the quality of the volunteers that we have at the senior center can't be matched. We have excellent excellent volunteers. We could not operate without them. Um, but certainly we can always use more. But that was an interesting question. How do you feel about the number of commission members? Fine with me. You're okay. I'm on different commissions, and everybody's having the same problem. Yeah, it's kind of sad. All right, so it looks like seven is the number. Um, I don't know when the time comes, maybe we can make a recommendation to the town council. I can talk to the staff a little bit more about that and see what the best route is for that. Do you think we need a vote or? Because we really don't do that much of anything. Well, you do. I mean, it's yeah. it's important when we need to make those purchases. It's important yeah, when we need to just figure saying. out membership, it's important. Um, and if there's an issue, like, you know, at one time there was an issue, they wanted, um, there were no, uh, like, in-law apartments in the houses. And I know I went to the um, one of the committees to talk TPC. about it. Yeah, TPC. Um, so things do come up at times. But, yeah, I mean, we're kind of a cool commission. <laughs> And we're just here to support the senior center in any way we can. So we're not like TPC. No, we're not controversial and we're not political. So, so <laughs> thankfully. So regarding that, you have a current ordinance in place. You have your membership that was in the charter, which now is not. You also have it in the code. So if you want to take a vote on that to move forward with changing your membership. That's fine. We can bring that forward to the council as an introduction and make that change. So the, the, the discussion to have would be, do you want to move from nine down to seven and two alternates, or do you want to just move down to seven regularly? Um, the quorum is still four with two alternates. The quorum would still be four, and you'd have two alternate members who may still come to the meetings, but may be available to fill other seats at that time too. It would be nice to have two alternates if we could get two alternates, but. Um, Those are two options. I think we should do the two alternates. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And I will say that both parties are working on membership at this point. They both have an updated listing, vacancies as well. And we are actually having an internal conversation about reaching out to non-affiliated voters and bringing that through the town manager's office to be able to get the larger block of citizens who may want to participate in the meetings and volunteer for boards, but aren't comfortable coming forward to a party. So that is something we are looking at. And sometimes people just wanna be asked. Correct. They're, they're happy to do it, but... You're right. They don't know the yeah. how, to, how to go about it. Exactly. So. so having that additional process, which isn't in the political realm, it's in the administrative realm, will, I think, assist us in filling a lot of those vacancies. It just becomes a little bit of a juggle. 
Okay. So would someone like to make a motion and we can take a vote on it? Well, or actually, rather... not at this meeting. On not the 7th, you can. Oh, that's it's right. It's a special meeting. To... That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will yeah. make a note to put it on the next agenda. Yes. Okay. You can have a special meeting after or before a, another meeting as long as you have it. Posted okay. within the 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Could add it on to December 7th. I'm making a note. And it could not be implemented until officially the charter is that, yeah, advertisement is going out for 30 days. So you're, it's not like uh, we can do it now and get it done sooner because you have to play out the appropriate form and way of doing things here. Right. And there are not this commission, but correct me if I'm wrong, James, but there are some by state statute that need to have a certain number. They're not by statute, and that's uh, confusion where the town attorney had mentioned that. The commission itself is created by statute, but the membership is determined by the town. Okay. So yeah. like the TPZ specifically, Conservation Commission, Development Commission, those are created under statute. The towns have them in place, but our membership is local. So every single committee Correct. is determined by the town, but some have to be there by state statute. Correct. I'm glad you cleared that up. Forgive me for asking that, but it's No, that's relevant. fine. That's interesting. Um, anything else under new business? Anyone have anything? No. Uh, public participation? James Krupinski. <laughs> James, do you have anything? Nothing for me. No, that's, I'm saying Nobody that else because I do this. know his last name. <laughs> and he says it correctly as well. That's right. Um, so I guess that's it. You can go off to your next meeting. Is there anything else? No. Uh, oh, a uh, clerk. Yes, I saw your email. I need to reach out to that person because we do need a clerk for this commission since Gail Whitney had retired. Okay. We do have two that are on retainer now. Oh. through the town manager's office. So if you do need somebody. Yes, I will contact, should I contact Heather? Yeah, contact okay. Heather, she'll be able to get you in contact with somebody to determine they're available on your meeting nights. Excellent. Thank you. No problem. So I tried to take minutes and then when I look back at my mess <laughs> and then we were away, so I couldn't get it typed up for tonight. So um, we'll get somebody. Okay. If you do need that, I have a full transcript of the meeting that's created with the system as well. Excellent. Yes, and I type like this. <laughs> so it would you take. You actually cut it out of it and just create what you want from it. Uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. Thank you for coming. Efficient, efficient and productive. This is nice here. I know, right? I feel important. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't up there. Oh, you didn't see yourself up there? You mean? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> if I had to look at myself, I think I might. Oh, well. congratulations <laughs> at the last meeting.